Hey, good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone here. I, I wish there was more brothers and sisters here today, but they're not. But you know what? We still pray for them. Pray for them because the Lord is faithful. Amen. And he's good. And all things is possible with the Lord. Uh, I was talking about earlier about what I was telling you right now, but we're going to go through through this as the Lord showed me. And maybe he'll reveal something to everyone. And this is someone I put it on YouTube uh, just for others so they can hear it. Uh, but we're going to go first to Acts chapter 2. One through four. You know, I, I thank God for my strength and my health and everything in my life, good and bad, mm -hmm. because the Lord is worthy, right? Amen. Amen. He is worthy. Um, Acts uh, chapter two, what? Yeah, verse one. Verse Acts two. chapter two, verse one. Uh, let me pray real quick. Okay. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father, for all things you've done in my life, Father. I'm not perfect. No one's perfect, Lord. Like I said, you going to the cross for us, Lord. You made a way for us. And believing in you, believing in you, and having faith, that we can have salvation and be saved by you, Lord. I pray, Lord, to be moved by your spirit, Father. To manifest your mysteries in the Word of God, the, mis the mysteries that are hidden in the Word, Lord, uh, through the Holy Spirit, Father, that I speak with boldness, Father, to people to understand how you work, to understand how we can be in you, and you can work through us, Lord. Let's open up this evening, Lord God, in Jesus' name, through the Word. I thank you, Father, for the glory and praise is yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm going to go through it right now. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. You know, when miracles and healings happen, it's with everyone is in one accord, in one mind. Like, a couple of weeks back, I was here, and Mary asked for prayer for one of the, the young kids, one of the grandkids again was, that was sick. And the following week that I came, she said, she told me that, that the one I had prayed for was well. And I said, because we came to one accord, together as one, and the Lord did the work. Mm -hmm. And... But if we got divisions in the churches and we try to pray for people, a division will stop that. It won't work. It's not like the day of Pentecost. There's 120 people to receive the Holy Spirit. There was more than that. But those are the ones in one accord. Mm -hmm. As we uh, go on right here, it says, uh, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind and filled the whole house where they were, and where they were sitting at. And there appeared to them divided tongues like fire, and that sat on each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the ability to speak. There's a lot of churches there don't believe in speaking in tongues. And Paul the Apostle said that he spoke more in tongues than, than others, but he wished that everybody spoke in tongues. So what he was saying that not everybody speaks in tongues, it was a gift. It's a gift. But what is tongues? Tongues is your spirit connecting with the Spirit of God. I notice that I pray for a lot of people all the time to other countries and other states. And when I pray, it always comes out of me. Not because I force it out, it comes out. 
And when that comes out, it's connecting with the Spirit of God, and healings do happen because through the Holy Spirit. And what the Lord showed me was, I said, I'm going to go a little further and I'll explain more. I'll explain more. Let's go to uh, Ezekiel 37, 9, 10. Ezekiel 37, 9, 10. You know, when Jesus came to the apostles, oh, I got to get, that's a little bit further than that, but let me get to this one here. I'm trying to jump the gun and get past all this, but I need to go as a word as the Holy Spirit leads me with it. I'm almost trying to lead the Holy Spirit. That's not the way it works. A little before nine, it says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. As I prophesied, there was a noise, then a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to bone. And when I looked, I saw the snooze and the flesh coming on them and the skin covering them. There was, there was no breath in them then. Then I said, prophesy to the, prophesy to the breath and prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thou says the Lord God, come from the four winds, it comes from the four winds, all breath, all breath on this, on this lane, that they may live. I want to stop there for a second. The breath is the Holy Spirit. He's saying, Son of man, command the breath. You know, a lot of us pray and we ask the Lord to heal. That this person might be healed or, or someone that we know and we pray for them for healing but the word of god says he commands us to command the breath it means the holy spirit say it say it and it will be i'm trying to say so i prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Not some of them, all of them. The Word of God says that all things is possible to them that believe. The breath, he's talking about the breath here as a Holy Spirit. You know, when I pray for people, I don't, I don't know, I don't tell the people, like, I'm praying for you, but I hope the Lord heals you, or, uh, oh Lord, please heal this person. I don't do that. I speak it into being. I say, in the name of Jesus, be healed, commanding through the Holy Spirit for it to be, because it comes to be a prophecy. In the first place, this person sick. After that as well, it's a prophecy coming to happen when you spoke it. We don't do it, but through the Spirit of God, you prophesy it into being and you speak it into being. When a person prays for someone and says, Lord, I'm praying that this person might be healed. Even if you say Jesus' name, they might be healed? That's not what the Word of God says. That's not what the Word of God says. If you can turn around and command it with authority given to me through Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, be healed in the name of Jesus, it ain't going to happen if you don't do it that way. A lot, of, a lot of pastors and a lot of people say, you cannot force something, you know, into God. You're not forcing anything to God. That's what the Word is. You know, the Word of God says a lot of things and a lot of meanings. And it's got a, little, a lot of ministries, a lot of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, things that we don't understand, that it's mysteries in the Word of God. It says one thing, but it means another. What are prophecies? Are things that are spoken that are going to be. What did Jesus say? 
And what was he filled with? Jesus said, and it was filled with the Holy Spirit, he spoke things into being. Things into being by speaking into being that wasn't, so it was a prophecy going forward, pushing it through. Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. But he's given us the Holy Spirit. But we seem to not to understand how the Spirit works, the Holy Spirit works in us to be able to do the things that Jesus did. Because doubt will stop you. I'm going to go to uh, Exodus chapter 4. Eleven. The Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Or who has made the dumb or the deaf? Or the seeing or the blind? Have not I? The Lord said, The Lord. So now go. And I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. What do you think he's talking about right there? He's still talking about the Holy Spirit. He will use you as an open vessel to speak through you. But we have to open understanding that the Spirit of God that dwells in you does the works. But God expects you to use the authority through the Holy Spirit to speak out for healing, for prophecy to happen. I'm going to go through uh, Acts 4.30. Ephesians 4.30. Where it says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you are sealed until the day of redemption. Day of redemption. You know what that means? You are sealed with the Holy Spirit. You have all power to the Holy Spirit. Jesus told the disciples, you have not faith, it's a mustard seed, you can tell this mountain, be removed and plant the seed, and it'll obey you. And nothing will be impossible to him that believes. But you have to speak it into being. He said, speak to the mountain. He didn't say, oh Lord, I ask you for this mountain to be removed over there. He said, no, you say it. You say it, says the Lord. On uh, Mark 16, 17, hallelujah. Here, Jesus saying, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all the creation. That is saying to doubt. No, you got to go and believe that what you're going to do and preach the word of God with all authority and power to the Holy Spirit. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. We can hear the Holy Spirit. If we don't go by the whole gospel, there's a lot of regulations that diff different religious people be they believe that, that speaking in tongues is done away with. It's not done away with. The only one that didn't speak in tongues, do you know who that was? Jesus. You know why he didn't speak in tongues? Because he was the Holy Spirit. 
He was filled with the Holy Spirit. He is Holy Spirit, Son of God in the flesh. Why do he give us a gift of the Holy Spirit? That's a connection through his power, through him and us. That's the gift of his power. Not everybody don't have it because everyone has different administrations, you know, in the ministry. Only certain ones receive certain things. Others receive more than others. But God wills what he wills. And this sign will follow those who believe. They will drive out demons in my name. They will speak with new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if they drink of anything deadly, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Do you believe that nothing will harm you? A long time ago, I was in California and I was hungry and I was getting something to eat. But as I wait, I go to this Spanish restaurant where they got real good food and and I I waited, waited, you know, doing things, different things in the ministry, and I finally got to go there. And I go in there and I'm starving, you know. Then I asked for this plate, the one I always liked, and they brought it to me. And sometimes when you're so hungry, you don't pay attention to what you're eating. Well, what I learned in the Word of God before is that always give thanks to the Lord. Pray for your meal. Pray for the meal. Bless it, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Right? Yes. And you thank Him for it. Yes. Well, I was so hungry. After I prayed, I ate half of it, but I kept smelling something bad. I don't know if you guys ever smell a dead cat on by the side of the road walking by there and smell it. Oh, it smells so bad. Mm -hmm. I can smell it and I'm looking around. What was where's that at? Then my nose led me straight to my food. Oh no. Oh my goodness. Put that fork down and said, uh, waitress! Yes, can I help you? She said. Here, smell this. Ooh, it's bad, huh? Yeah. I'll bring you something else. Uh, no thank you. No thank you. So I, I said, I'm okay. I paid for the bill. I didn't throw a fit. I didn't try suing him. If I would have threw a fit, try suing him, I would have been testing God, and I would have got sick. I would have gotten sick. But I wasn't thinking about that. I would just didn't want to do that. So I left. I didn't get sick or nothing. I didn't get any feeling of sickness. Why? Because I prayed over the food mm -hmm. and I didn't hold no grudges over anyone to give me that food. Yeah. I let it go. But I don't remember before I knew the Lord and I used to work at this uh, place at and they used to have this truck come in and bring food. Mm -hmm. You know, and I used to buy up the truck and two times that I bought the truck, I got so sick, I got food poisoning, man. I, I missed work for two or three days and I was sicker than sick. I go to a doctor. But after I found out in the word of God, like the word it says right here, and if you pick up serpents, if you drink everything daily or eat anything deadly, it will not harm them. You will lay hands on the sick and they will be and they'll recover. Because when you pray, the Lord does a cleansing. Mm -hmm. It purifies your food where it doesn't matter if somebody's trying to poison you, will not die. You won't. But he does it through the Holy Spirit. And then we go on to the other one here, where our Mark. We're going to go to Thessalonians 5.19. 1 Thessalonians 5.19. One nineteen. I don't got 19 on Thessalonians here, do I? Was it 9? Might have been 9. No, it's not it. No, it's 2. Now, we give thanks to God always for all, for all of you, mentioning you in prayers. Remembering constantly your work in faith and labor and love and patience and hope in your Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of our Lord God. 
See, the Holy Spirit can only work when we are, you know, humbling ourselves and and have that peace of God in us. It only works the Holy Spirit that way. It doesn't work when we're angry or or we have resentment or bitterness, you know, all of that. It, that kills us. It, it, what it does, it uh, hinders the Holy Spirit to do anything in our lives. So going from this, where it says, do not quench the Holy Spirit. It says, John 20, 21, 22. John 20, 21, 22. Where it says, Then in the evening day, no, no, the other one, wrong one. And when he had said this, he showed his hands and his side, and his disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Then Jesus said to them again, Peace be to you, as my Father has sent me, so I send you. Now, this right here is more to what he's saying right here. When you're called into the ministry, as Jesus was in the ministry, he was sent by the Father with all authority and power to do the will of the Father. When Jesus sends you out, as the Father has sent Jesus, he sends you with the same thing. With a power and authority. He, does, he equips you with everything. But we are things. We turn around and. And doesn't, don't take the whole thing. As walking with the Lord. And being sent with all equipped. All authority and power. We we'll always leave part of it away. Because we might. Not completely go by all the word of God. We only go by part of it. By believing on some things in the Word of God and some things we don't, or some things are already gone away, or that was only at that time, uh, is not. The Word of God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It never changed. So he says, As the Father sent me, I send you. He said, Peace on you. Then when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. There it goes again. He breathed on them. As before in Ezekiel. Where he talks about the breath. He commanded. said command the breath. For the bones to come alive. The Holy Spirit. So Jesus breathed on them. said receive the Holy Spirit. So there you go again. It's got to do with what we speak and understand that the power of God moves when you say it to be. You don't say it to be because you want to say it to be. You say it to be because it comes right from your spirit out. Doesn't mean that anybody that's sick, I go to them and say, let me pray for you. I'm going to cast that sickness out of you. No. I know when I'm supposed to do that because the Holy Spirit kind of brings me into that person or he stops me from doing it. A lot of times I've been wanting to pray for someone and if something stops me, there's no feeling to do it. I can't do it. I mean, just I want to, but I have this feeling not to. So I go by that feeling not to because the Holy Spirit don't want me to. So you just can't turn around and just... Because you know that, that you're going to come in a healing. The authority of the power of the Holy Spirit be healed. But yet, that's not what the Holy Spirit wants at that moment. It ain't going to happen. When it says do not quench the Spirit of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, what's in the Word of God is the truth. That means you cannot take from it. You cannot add to it. Those that take from it or add to it or be least in the kingdom of God. That's what the Word of God says. That's the same thing. If you believe in one thing in the Word of God and don't believe in the other thing in the Word of God, it makes you least in the kingdom of God.
Our next one eight. X1, 8. He said to them, It is not for you to know the times and, or the days which the Father has put under his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be witnesses for me, both in Jerusalem and all of Judea, and Samaria, and to the utmost part of the earth, you will receive power when he sends you out. Is the word of God the truth? Is the word of God the truth? As Jesus said, and he will set us up with power? That is the truth. You know, this is one thing I gotta ask is, uh, is that a lot of, well, the churches are people, period. The churches are the people. Mm -hmm. But the people in buildings have different, different doctrines in the Word of God. And they sometimes they leave stuff out of the Bible because they feel like. Um, they feel like the, that part was gone away with whatever it was a long time ago. And you cannot go by the Bible and leave something out or add something to it. The Lord was showing me that I be praying sometimes in a different church and they don't believe in different things. So Instead of doing how the Lord showed me, I kind of like bring it down a little bit. But the Lord was really strict with me one day when I was praying. He said to me, are you to please man or please me? The gospel is a gospel. You do not leave anything out. The truth is the truth. Do not hinder the Holy Spirit. It's the same thing as denying it. And if you deny the Holy Spirit, you have no life now and life to come. I said, Lord, I didn't mean to do that. But see, there's a lot of churches that, that, that said, you need to do it this way because that's the way we do it in, in our religion. Uh, it's not right. Because if you can't bring the gospel what it is, and somebody tells you, you need to leave this out, because their belief is not that, then what are you denying God himself? And you're not going to have healings. You're not going to have miracles. Because you come short of the reward of God that he wants to give you. He wants to give you all the arsenals to fight the enemy. The enemy's sickness and pains and devastation and chaos in your life. God wants to equip us with everything on himself, his power. But when you deny something in the Bible because your religion believes in something different than what it is, then it's not God, it's man's way, and you hinder the Holy Spirit. You hinder it. A lot of preachers preach the word of God in their beliefs, their religion, and how they, they believe the word of God is. When it's not how they believe the word of God is, it's what the word is. It is what it is. God the same yesterday, day, and tomorrow. That's it. God has given me the anointing and healing and miracles. Healing miracles, when I pray with someone and then they get healed over there, is a prophecy being spoken to being. Mm -hmm. As the same way as in Ezekiel, when, the, when God spoke to him and said, Command the bread for the bones to come alive. Speak to this mountain to be removed in the sea. He didn't say, 
He didn't say, uh, please, can you remove it and put it in the sea? No. Say it. Remove the sea, and it shall be done. The authority and power of the Holy Spirit that he has given us, and we don't use it, or we don't understand how to use it, you hinder it. You hinder it. You know, do we all believe that the Bible is the whole truth? But if we all believe the Bible is the whole truth, why do some people only teach or preach what they think is what they should preach to that church or to their church and leaving some things out? What does that do to that church, that people in that place? It hinders the Holy Spirit, and you will not see you no know, healings, you will not see you no know, miracles. Chaos will come against you. God don't got your back because you didn't take all the articles of God because you only took part of it. You didn't take the whole gospel. You only took part. You thought it was, you know, but you should, because you believed only in certain things, then God doesn't give you the whole armor of God. But then what the Lord showed me too is this. Just because you don't have the whole arsenal of God and things are not happening in that place, I said, Lord, that's pretty strong to bring out to a church. Then the Lord spoke to me. Actually, about an hour before I came over here. Put it in a different way. He said, he knows the weakness of people on their faith because of how they believe. But he says, I'm able to make him stand, he said. I'm able to make him stand. I accepted them already, even though they're weak. That's what he spoke to me. It's in the Word of God, but I didn't search for it, but I know it's in the Word of God. But that's what he said. But it does stop miracles and healings and the chaos happening in churches because we're only taking part of the armor of God. But the Lord has accepted the weak, the weak ones in that. He's able to make them stand. You already accepted them. But, but they come short in the power and movement and authority of the Holy Spirit because they're nitpicking on the Word of God. I hate to say it that way. If it ain't the whole gospel, it ain't all the gospel and the truth it's all here, and you take only part of the truth because of what you believe is and what what organization or, or religion you got, and, and you go by that. You won't see all those things happen. But the Lord told me, you already accepted them, even though they're weak in faith. God is merciful. Mm -hmm. I'm not claiming to know everything because it's only what the Holy Spirit reveals to me. And sometimes they come out kind of like like I'm being mean or or being over aggressive. But I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to give the right understanding how the Holy Spirit is hindered and why a lot of buildings because the people of the churches have so many different regulations and standards and ways they do things that hinder the Holy Spirit. Oh yes, a few times I pray to different churches and I'll be praying and the tongue's gonna come out and I would stop it. Not knowingly I was hindering the Holy Spirit. Not knowingly by doing that I was denying God. So he spoke to me harshly, give me a rude awakening. Either I please man or please God. Which one? Do I please him? Or please man? I said, Lord, forgive me. I said, I didn't know I was a man pleaser. I was just trying to bring more people to you, Lord. Not knowing I was hearing the Holy Spirit. I asked forgiveness. So now, I when I go to a church and I bring the whole gospel, Hey, if they don't agree to what I'm bringing up in the gospel, 
the truth? Well, that's not on me. It's on them. Between them and God. Does anybody have any questions on this? Yeah, I do. You talk about tongues. And tongues. Tongues is something about when you say it, you got to tell them what you're talking about. An interpreter. Interpreter, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, the reason Paul said that is because it says that there was a lot of a lot of people in church and they haven't heard of tongues. But you know what? Everybody's heard of tongues now. Everybody has. At that time, there was only a fraction of people that even ever heard of tongues. Mm -hmm. They even hear about Holy Spirit, period. So he brought that up then because that time it wasn't around like it is now. Now you know there's people speaking tongues in other places. Mm -hmm. Don't say that if a preacher is preaching here and starts speaking all in tongues, because the Holy Spirit will not do that. The Holy Spirit will do that when you're praying for someone. All of a sudden, you start, the person is praying for that person starts speaking in tongues. Or I'll be preaching or I'll be saying something and a few words come in tongues. But the thing about it is, it also says, do not forbid no one that speaks in tongues, the Word of God says. The interpretation of tongues is when there's a lot of people that don't even know God. They know, don't even know God. And they, they all start speaking in tongues. They say, oh, you're crazy. They're crazy. But the word of God says, do not please man, please God. Because see, speaking in tongues is an is identification between your spirit and the spirit of God. What it's doing is, is energizing between both of you. And the Holy Spirit power is manifesting. It's a, uh, it's a tongue like Winston Mead, or uh, we have another pastor come from he's an Indian, and he started talking Choctaw, but he said, when he gets done, he says what he says he said. Now, is that tongue? That's what I've heard. I mean, tongue is your own, because back- You're talking about a different language. Back in what what what, what, what is back in the old times when they were the people were building a temple to the heavens or something and they were all talking the same language that's when God Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, speaking in tongues is just identification between you and God. Mm -hmm. It is is a language of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Uh there's other languages like Choctaw and uh Spanish, uh, Russian, all that. Those are little languages. Mm -hmm. But speaking in tongues is a language between the spirit, your spirit and God's spirit. It's a connection. Uh, it's a gift. And that's why I told you the Lord give me a rude awakening because I've been stopping it from speaking in tongues when I'll be giving out the word of God or praying for someone because they're going to be uncomfortable. They're not going to receive it right. So I want to come out and I stop it. And that's what he told me. Ah, ah, you're denying me. You're hindering the Holy Spirit. So, so when you tell me that when an interpreter is there, they should only speak in tongues to keep quiet. But no, there's more to it than that. Everyone knows about tongues now. At that time, there was only so many. So Paul was using an example, you know, just to Calm it down a little bit, not to stop. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's just what I understand. I read that in the Bible too about that tongue and stuff. And I said, well, isn't it just like back in the old times or something when everybody spoke, speak the same language and stuff and then God made it where there were different, speaking of different things to stop what they were doing. And, uh, and let me ask you what the other was saying then. Let me ask you something. Is tongues a gift? I guess I guess. That's what the word of God says. Tongues is a gift of God. But uh, what if we don't know what it, what it is, what you're talking about? I mean, if, if it's a gift. 
See, I'm saying I'm up here and I'm preaching the word of God and I'm praying for people to be healed and all of a sudden it comes out okay. a little bit. I'm not saying going completely bananas in tongues, just a little bit. Yeah. That's because connecting with the Lord. There's nothing wrong with that. Or, you, or I pray for someone here and all of a sudden it comes out for a few seconds. That's a manifestation of God's power. Now, if I stop it while well, I'm, you know, praying, I'm denying the Lord because somebody is thinking, why is he doing that here? Who am I to please? Who am I supposed to please? He gave me that. When I received speaking in tongues, it wasn't like, like I started practicing how to do that. Uh-uh. When I asked the Lord to reveal his word himself to me, when he put that word to read the Bible, that I didn't want to read it, and I couldn't pronounce the words or even read it or understand nothing. I don't get past the verse, the verse or nothing. And I, and I kind of got angry. I went to the garage and I prayed, Lord, open my heart to you. Reveal your word yourself to me. I don't understand it. It started with, ah, da, 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 da. And then all of a sudden it turned to a oh, language, a strong language. So strong that I couldn't stop. Mm -hmm. Nothing that I could do to stop it. Everything I mean was coming out. I could felt on my liver, my kidney, my heart was coming out my throat. And I felt like my head was gone and this was open. Everything was shoot out. And then I thought to myself, if I don't stop, I'm going to die. I'm going to be inside out. So I suffocated myself, I don't know how many minutes, and almost turned purple, then finally stopped. Now, I have no control over it, none. And what is it the Lord want me to do? <clears throat> to not stop it. Because that's the power of God. He gives, for different ministrations, He gives them different gifts. Some He gives more than one gift. Mm -hmm. What? For his pleasure. Not because we ask for it. He's got his reasons. Mm -hmm. But the reason I'm saying this now, we got to quit picking in what we believe in the Bible and only, and, and thinking that we could only go by this and that because what you believe, you are not receiving all authority and power from God. You're only seeing part of it. You're not fully equipped. Because your beliefs. Is not the full gospel. So we hinder the Holy Spirit. You know. I've been preaching in a lot of churches. The only time I usually do a video is here. If I had done in the other churches, you would have seen what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. They would have said, oh, no, no, we don't believe in that. No, 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 no. That's done away with the apostles. No, no, no. You know, and that's a division. And what happens? Are they receiving everything from the Lord? No. You can't deny the whole thing. You can't deny the Bible. You deny the truth, the whole gospel, you deny God. So that's what the Lord asked me to put upon my heart and spoke to me and told me that. It was just for my benefit, for everyone else that's listening right now to understand. If you don't go by the whole truth and only go by what you believe in it, you're not receiving all the arsenals of God. You're not receiving all the power of God. You don't have your armor of God. You could only have so much. And the Lord spoke to me. Calm down. I have already accepted him. And I, I can make him stand, says the Lord. He said that. But they're not fully equipped for healing and miracles and prophecy because... And the Bible says, if you take anything from the word of God, you'd be less in the kingdom of heaven. Less in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. That means you don't want to enter it. 
Any more questions? Okay. <laughs> well, I'm gonna pray then we'll close up. Is anybody in your family sick or anything? We just need prayer for Carlos. Who? Carlos. Car you Carlos, you sick? Well, he's he's had bad troubles right now, so he's in jail. So he's, he's not lost. Right or not the, uh, Is he lost? Huh? Kind of lost? I think kind of, I don't know what you would call it. It's okay. He well, went in his bad ways. And I mean, he was just in his bad ways, I guess. That's all I can say. It, it, it just caught up to him. Even though he didn't physically, but I think Facebook and stuff like that kind of got him in trouble. So. And, uh, Pray for his well-being then, huh? Yes, he really needs to go back. Okay, and what about over here? I'm good. You're good? Well, I thought God was only good. <laughs> Praise God. Yep. And just pray for me. You? Yeah. I don't know, deal with aches and pains. I guess I get growing old. <laughs> well, why don't you come up here so I can pray for you? Okay. Uh, and there's some stuff that he probably needs in jail, so I need, need a paperback Bible, and I just found this one, maybe, I don't know, it's not <coughs> big enough, but I gotta get him a few more other stuff that um, he needs. You come and over here. Then we'll let him have a plain Bible, his Bible. Okay. Raise your hand. Mm -hmm. Get over here closer. Heavenly Father, as I pray, Father, I pray for the sister right here, Lord God. I know that everyone has issues in their lives, Father, and sometimes we take it like issues are issues, but we try not to let them bother us. But sometimes it still bothers us. It could be family matters, or it could be financially, or it could be too much work. But I pray for the sisters, her heart's in the right place. She has questions, but she wants to know the truth. And I believe, Father, that you want to touch her right now. She's going to feel the awesome healing power of yours, Father, manifest through her. And so I'm praying for her, too. I pray for Carlos. Issues that he has right now, Lord, that the devil's playing mind tricks on him, Lord. And I know, Lord God, that he wants to come to you, Lord, but he's being hindered. So I'm praying right now. For Carlos and right now for my sister that she's touched by you, Lord. And I believe, Father, your word says, ask of you anything and you will do it. So I'm praying for her right now and Carlos. I'm praying for healing. I'm praying for prosperity. I'm praying, Father, for anything, issues in her life and her and Carlos' life. In the name of Jesus right now, Lord, come upon her right now. Both of them, Father, in Jesus' name. To feel the awesome healing power of yours, the manifestation of your peace, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. In Jesus' name, the glory and praise is yours, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You okay now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>